The Amore Eterno collection, I believe, is the full name of the collection. There are a bunch of items in this collection. Now, I only picked up a very small amount, but just to give you guys a little bit of information, there is the Vita palette, which is, of course, a pressed pigment palette. This is $58. There's the Merte eyeshadow palette, which is also $58. The Illumination highlighter, which is $39. I'm wearing all of these products on my face. There's four gel liners. There is a deep emerald green, a cinnamon orange, a bright ocean blue, and an intense black. There's also a, a set of liquid lipsticks. Um, there's a mandarin orange color, a vivid royal purple, and a very bright pink shade, as well as some brushes. You can get the brush set for $80 or you can buy them individually. There's also a bag for $15 and then the full collection for $295. Now, in my swatch party video of this collection, I had mentioned my friend Amy had bought the PR set. So if you want to see a full review, definitely check out her video because she kind of swatched everything I do believe and like broke things down. And I only picked up a few pieces from the collection. I just tried to buy everything that I personally wanted instead of shelling out the $2.95. Like I wasn't going to do that. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to kind of give you guys some overview of that. The whole collection should be available on Black Friday on Melt's website as well as Sephora. So if you want to use, you know, a Sephora gift card or you want to get points, definitely shop on Sephora. And if you guys don't carry the way, you can use Melt. Melt does have a payment plan, which I personally used because why not? Like it's it's nicer to break up the payments because my order, I did order an extra highlighter. Um, I wanted Gamma Ray, this one, and it was on sale the day they launched the collection. So I ended up spending about $170 on the Melt website, which I don't usually spend money like that on collections, but this one was so attractive that I did kind of, you know, splurge. This was like one of my la last big purchases for 2019, and I was really interested in this collection. So the first thing I really quickly wanted Want to talk about is this highlighter. I believe it's pronounced Illum Illumination um, and this is their highlighter formula, their digital dust highlighter formula and the net weight is 7.0 grams or 0.24 ounces which is a decent amount of product. It says it is made in Italy and distributed by Melt Cosmetics. So the shade, I do have it on my Cheekbones today, I definitely packed this on. I did wet my face before I put it on because I had heard that that was the way to do it. Now, comparing a different digital dust highlighter, this is Genesis. This one is actually eight grams, whereas the Illumination one is seven grams. I'm guessing the difference in the, in the amount that each contains is because the one that came in this packaging has that pretty embossing. So I'm guessing we're losing a little bit of product because that skull is raised. I don't know if you guys can see that, um, but that would make sense. Other than that, the packaging is absolutely identical and I love this formula. I love having Genesis and now I'm glad I have this one. Very good stuff from Melt. So I wouldn't recommend it if you're not into this shade, of course. It's definitely not my cup of tea. I feel like I've seen a lot of reviews kind of across the board where people are kind of saying like, eh, you can definitely skip it. But I also know a lot of people are really interested in it because of the beautiful pattern. And then this is the box packaging for that highlighter. So of course, if you're like a makeup junkie and you like to collect pretty packaging. This is pretty unique, so I can understand wanting to do that. I only have one other Melt palette, and that is the is the Melt Smoke Session palette. This is made in the USA, and I picked this up almost a year ago now when it launched on their site. As you can see, mine is one of those where it puffs out of the packaging. I believe Teresa is Dead also talked about this in her Melt video where she reviewed the Vita palette where she said her Smoke Sessions palette is very fragile and she also kind of mentioned having kind of a love-hate 
relationship with Melt, which is a very apt way of describing my relationship with Melt as well, because some of the products are really like knocks it out of the park. And then products like my so Smoke Sessions palette, as you can see, a lot of it is kind of puffing out of the packaging. So I do try to be very careful with that. Prior to that, I had also purchased their 27 palette, which broke multiple times. Every time I tried to open it, because the packaging is so sturdy and the magnet is so strong, every time I opened it, the shadows would just completely shatter. And so because of that, I was very turned off by Melt and their eyeshadow palettes, and I was always very careful because they are a little bit pricey. Cue this collection launching. This packaging was so pretty, and like I had mentioned in my swatch party video, me and Angelica and Amy, we were all just freaking out about this palette, so we were more than happy to pick so, these up. So. On the back here, it says they're made in the USA, and that's pretty much all it says on the back. And then the Melt website, and I think I have a batch code on mine, so both of them have um, one says 33919A and then 33719A are my batch codes on here. So packaging is a 10 out of 10 quality so far. I've really, really been enjoying it. I honestly am so afraid of pressed pigments or anytime a palette says it's like a pressed pigment palette, it makes me so, so nervous because there's people that love pressed pigments and then there's me and I'm like one of those people that I love to blend my eyeshadows. I'm not really a pack on kind of person and that's okay. I think I think that it's personal preference and everyone's allowed to have their own opinion about these things so I definitely was nervous about it but I have honestly haven't had any problems. I've worn almost all these shades on my eyes. The only one I don't think I remember putting on is this gray shade but I think, you know, it's one shadow and I don't really see myself using grays anyway, so I still feel like I can talk about this. I am wearing this palette on my eyes and the cool thing about these palettes is I think they pair so well together. I've been doing that a lot. I've been pulling from both of them. When you put them together, they almost kind of look like a long rainbow palette. So you can kind of start from one end and kind of incorporate the shades um, back and forth between each look. So I did do about three looks with this and then this is my fourth eyeshadow palette look and I've really enjoyed every single one. I think they're so unique. A lot of you guys have seen them on Instagram and stuff like that and you've really been enjoying it. So a lot of people said like please try and do a review before they launch and yeah I think you know if you're comfortable with Melt's formula you should definitely consider picking these up. They are honestly very unique and very beautiful and I'm really really enjoying having them in my collection. Now I did film this eye look so I want to go ahead and quickly insert how I created this look so you guys can kind of see how they perform on my eyes. Right. So today we want to play with the Vita and Morte palette from Melt Cosmetics and I've actually worn these palettes now about three times so this will be my fourth time using them and I've played with these shades and these shades and I've played with all the shades in the Vita palette except like the neutral browns but I'm not really too concerned about those um, so I think I want to do something with the Morte palette I have this idea of using the red in my crease and then maybe putting this um, cart Katrina shade on my lids. I've seen that look somewhere. It's in my brain and that I've seen a look like that. So I think that's what I'm going to try and do today. And I'm going to insert this makeup look into my review of this palette. I feel like I've had enough time playing with these where I can give you guys a decent review of who should be picking these up on Black Friday. So Right now we're just going to focus on application, so I'm going into the shade Corazon. You guys, it's so funny. So where I'm from, I'm Sri Lankan, and at one point, I think we had been colonized by the Spanish at some point, and so there's a lot of like Spanish words that are incorporated into Sinhalese, which is my first language. Um, and so sometimes I'll hear um, words that are Spanish and I'm like, wait, we have that same word 
in my language, which like I can't think of any particular <laughs> examples like right off the top of my head, but isn't that kind of crazy to think of? The other fun fact, I don't think a lot of people know this about where I'm from, but Sri Lanka had a very old civilization. So we have the second, um, I think the second or the first um, most documented history of the world, like that's actually been written down. So I think a lot of people think like, oh, small island in the middle of nowhere, like Sri Lanka, ha ha ha. But really we have this rich, rich history. And if you ever get a chance to visit, you can check out so many of the beautiful like ruins and stuff um, from the kings of the past. And it's like a very fun experience. So I'm going into the shade Mexicana and I just wanted to brighten up this red. So I'm just throwing that into my crease as well and just blending these honestly blend really well i was so worried because you guys know pigments the word pigment makes me nervous it really does um so this is the shade saying gray the red burgundy shade i'm going to throw that in the outer corner and kind of build that into the crease as well, just to deepen things up. Okay, so I like how those reds blended. I've been using this brush quite a bit with these palettes. As you can see, this is the Sigma Detail Blending Brush, and I like it because it has like a blending brush shape, but it's also a flat brush, so it's really good at concentrating shades. So I'm gonna go back into saying gray and then also dip into uh, Veloreo and I'm gonna pat and blend that to the outer corner and it really helps kind of get the product into the places I want to get it to which I really like. There is a bit of this dark shade this dark blue shade because I've been using it a lot it's called no Noche Externa, I believe, or Extrena, and this is such a great shade to deepen up these eye looks. I've been pairing them with all the green looks I did, all the blue looks I did, so I just grab that with this Sigma brush, and I just pat that on. Okay, I like that. I like that a lot. It's very dark and deep, so I'm going to keep it at a minimal, and then I really, 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 really like for shimmer shades, a flat brush like this. This is a synthetic brush. This is actually a concealer brush from Morphe. And I was trying to look for this the other day because somebody was talking to me about how they had a hard time applying JD Glow shadows. And I told her I just use this Morphe M224 brush and it works really well for me. So I was trying to tell her which name it was. And so this is it. Um, but I love to use this with shimmers and I just wanted to grab something to wet the shimmer with so I'm going into Kater, Kat, Katrina sorry sometimes it's not as complicated as we think it is oh yeah these um, shimmers perform so much better when they're wet wet <laughs> wet it's unreal so I just dip spray do you see that color oh it's so beautiful Okay, so I love how that looks, and I'm just gonna do the other eye. So I'm just gonna repeat the step, grab a bunch, spray generously, and then I just take that brush, and oh my god, it just glides on. I tried to use the green shade from the Vita palette without wetting it, and I'm telling you guys. Okay, guys, so I really like how this looks. Just blending in some of that brighter red shade because the thing about dark jewel tones like this is it like freaks me out because I feel like I look like I have a black eye um but this is such a fun color story even like for a night out like on the town you know it kind of is just like a fun take on a smoky eye type of deal what I've really been enjoying doing is playing with these Kaleidos highlighters and this blue shade, which is called Space Age. I just like to throw that in to the inner corner 
and it just like brightens up this look a little bit and uh, yeah just kind of jazzes everything up so I'm gonna finish this look and I will be back to show you how it all turned out. Okay, so I'm almost done with my makeup. I just used the Venus Liner by ColourPop. This is the best creme gel liner from ColourPop that I own. I love it so much. It's so flipping creamy. If you guys are looking for a good gel liner, I would 100% recommend it to you guys. And now I'm just using this dome shape brush and it's got some red on it. And I'm just gonna blend my lower lash line I kind of messed that up a little bit here on the outer corner okay love and then I'm gonna go back into the highlighter by Kaleidos and add more of that blue in my inner corners love and then I want to use the new illumination illumination I feel like I'm saying that like the minions but I'm gonna spray my face first because I'm sure you guys have heard so many people say pigmentation on this not that exciting but everyone loves it for the packaging so I heard that if I wet my face it would pop and they were right. Oh my goodness, it's really popping. That glow dough. Okay, I need to stop. Okay, so mascara and some lippy and I will be right back. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed the eye look. Now I kind of wanted to do some swatches for you because some of you had asked me to compare the blues in the Morte palette to the blue stack or the blueprint stack. I hadn't actually swatched the blueprint stack so I figured you know what now is a good time. I never usually you know make such long videos but especially with swatches and stuff. Oh my gosh that was really dusty but I thought you guys would really appreciate it if I did include swatches and it totally makes sense that you want to see the blueprint swatches next to the Morte palette because there are a lot of these same blue shades in there. Okay, so there is a really pretty shimmery blue as well in the blueprint stack. So there's those four shades. And these two are brown, so obviously I'm not gonna swatch those. But the shades I swatched were called Deadbolt and Skylight. And then I swatched Dim Out and King Stud. And now I'm gonna go into the Morte palette and I'm gonna swatch Duello, which is actually a teal green, but I'll just swatch that. And then uh, Noche Eterna and then um, Car uh, Katrina, which is the glitter I have on my eyes next to, wow, these are swatching so badly. Oh my goodness, hold on a second here. Let me just see, they apply like a pigment, but they're honestly a lot easier to use. Okay, so there you can see, that's the shimmer shade from the uh, Morte palette. And then the two mattes, they very much swatch like a pressed pigment. And as you can see all the shades together, there's really no similarities there, uh, but, you know what, it doesn't hurt to check because sometimes you don't need like duplicate shades and things like that. So hopefully that was helpful. And then I had heard someone say, I think Teresa said, that she didn't buy the Morte palette because she thought the shades kind of reminded her of her Smoke Session palette. So I'm going to swatch Space Queen because that definitely looks like the green shade, this teal green in the Morte palette. So there's a swatch of that, that definitely swatched a lot prettier than the teal in the Morte palette. But I've been using this on my eyes and I haven't had a problem building that up. So there's those sh two shades next to each other. This one from the Smoke Sessions is a lot more pigmented, but like I said, I've used it on my eyes and I haven't had a problem building that up at all. And then I wanted to swatch Sweet Tooth 
These are so crumbly and um, Blue Dream from Smoke Sessions. So I'm just going to swatch that right here and right here, as you can see. And then next to um, Angelito, which is the Shimmer Teal, and then La Lagrimas, which is like a matte teal. So I'm going to swatch right there. So Smoke Session, Smoke Session, Morte Palette, Morte Palette. So those are really the most similar shades that I see in the palettes. I guess Vita kind of has like this brown shade that's kind of similar to Sour Diesel, but really not that close. So yeah, I think this will kind of give you guys a good idea of any similar shades that I have from the Melt palettes. Now, if you want to see swatches of the Morte palette and the Vita palette, like I said, I did do a swatch party video, so I would definitely direct you there. Okay guys, so we did a look, we did swatch comparisons, I did do a whole swatch party video if you haven't caught that yet. I'll try and remember to link it up in the cards or in the description box, otherwise it was like last week, so it shouldn't be too hard for you guys to find. Other than that, I don't even know what else to say. I like these palettes a lot. They're definitely like one of my favorite collections that launched in 2019. Very unique, very fun. But if you are a neutral loving, you know, naked honey palette, wielding, <laughs> urban decay, and ColourPop brown sugar loving gal, I can totally see these not being up your alley and I think that's totally fine. Um, I'm sure in the future Melt will come out with more neutral eyeshadow palettes. I don't really know. I don't think it's their vibe, but you never know, you know? I feel like every brand that does fun, colorful eyeshadow palettes eventually does come out with something neutral, so I don't think I'm too far off. Just wanted to come on here and tell you guys that I really like these palettes. That's the main thing. The pros are I think they're easy to work with and I can do so many fun color combos with this. The cons might be for you, they are kind of pricey. If you don't like formula of these, I can see you really hating them. And what else was I gonna say? I guess the color combos, like if you these colors don't appeal to you, I can totally see you hating it. This one may be more for the neutral gal because if you cover up these shades, at least you can kind of do those sunset kind of eye looks. But I must also mention, I did use these two shades in a look and I honestly wasn't really able to get like that bright yellow to show up on me. But again, I've seen people much darker than me make pastels pop, so that could just be a me problem, not the shadow problem. But I hope this was helpful. I would honestly recommend this, but I understand not everyone wants to spend $170 on eyeshadow, and I totally understand that. Um, but I wanted to get on here and give you guys my two cents on the whole situation. So thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, leave me a comment down below or give this video a thumbs up. And I will catch you guys in my next one soon. Bye!